there's a new stealth coding model in the market which is called sonic and most of the people are guessing that this is going to be the next go code sonic has a relatively good context window of 262,000 tokens and it is built for coding only which means that it's only going to be coding specific now in this video today i'm going to show you how you can use sonic for free using row code you can even use cursor if you wanted to but for this video we're going to be using row code and i will be installing this inside my bs code now without further chatter let's actually dive right into the video and start setting up our sonic model hi and welcome back to skill curve this is a host from Riz, and let's get started with the video now so first things first to use sonic for free you need to have row code installed inside your bs code and how would you do that you have to go to the extension marketplace and just search for row code and you can just go ahead and install this extension by clicking install here mine is already installed so i don't need to actually install it now once you have this extension installed how are you gonna actually set up your sonic model for that you can just go to the settings here and here in the provider section you will have to change the provider to row code cloud you can search for it right here and as soon as you find it just click on row code cloud and you can choose the model sonic for free now for the free model it does not support images and does not support computer use but it does support prompt caching which is literally more than enough now that we have our sonic model set up with row code let's actually get started with the testing and whenever i try out any new coding model i start with the first test which is related to its ui ux capabilities and its web development capabilities so for the first test, we're going to be building a simple landing page of a website. So there goes the prompt to develop the landing page of football shoes and just make it cool with animations. Now, you might be wondering, what is this architect? This architect means that it's going to actually plan the whole implementation before actually going to start coding. And once we're done with that planning, we can just switch to code here and it will automatically do that later on, you will see. For now, let's just click on enter and just wait for the results. Now it's going to ask you to approve some actions like this one here where it wants to read the top level files to understand what files we have in the directory. So I'm just going to approve it. Now it's asking you what technology stack would you prefer? Do you want HTML, CSS and JavaScript? Do you want React or Vue or Next.js? It's really up to you. For this test, I'm not going to be too simple. So I'm just going to go with React here. If I wanted to be really simple with this test, I can go with HTML, CSS and JavaScript we have to be a little bit more complex to actually observe the strongholds of this model. So next question is, what design style and animation would you have in mind? So I always prefer clean, professional layouts. But for this one, because the theme is sports, I want to go with bold and energetic designs. So let's go with this one here. Now, the next thing is asking is what key sections should the landing page include? So there should be a hero section and there should be a product showcase. And there should be, I think this is more than enough testimonials and newsletter sign up. I like this one. Now it's asking me that if I'm happy with this plan, it's going to actually switch it to code mode and start implementation. So yes, I'm happy with the plan. So there goes, yes, I approved this plan and start implementation. So as soon as I hit enter, it's going to keep that context in mind and actually start working on it. And here is asking your permission to switch to code mode here. Let's go and switch to code mode and you can see it's switched right here. So now it's going to run some commands to actually install the React dependencies and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and run all these commands. Okay, so there you go. The project is complete after 10 completed tasks from the to-do list. And you can see that the server is running right now. We created all of these components. And here are the results. So score big with elite football shoes. I really like the animation here and also the background. So there you go. Another animation. Add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. This is really cool. Then we have this really cool animation here for the testimonials and also a newsletter here. I like the colors, the animation, and also the website featuring football and shoes. And I think this is really great. But one thing that I think that should have been better is the spacing on the left you can see right here. And also we could have added more cards here. But all in all, this is really great for a free model and also for a model that is so fast. It did all of this within five minutes, installing all the dependencies and creating all the components. Now let's jump to the next test, which is creating image cropper tool using Python. 
So let me open up a new chart right here. So in this test, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be actually creating an image cropper tool using Python and I'm going to make it a graphical user interface. So let's go ahead with this right here. I always go with simple prompts, but I add the crucial details there. So the prompt goes like create an image cropper tool using Python and make sure it has functional GUI. Let's go ahead and hit enter and see how it actually creates this amazing image cropper tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and approve. There you go. It's going to create this new directory for the image cropper tool. Okay, go ahead and do that. Now we're going to be creating files. So there you go. We have the Python setup and everything. Now we're going to install the dependencies like Tinker and Pillow. So let's go ahead and install these dependencies. It's actually going to ask me to switch to CD image cropper and then pip install these requirements.txt. So there you go. We have the results here. I can actually go ahead and load the image. So let's say I just want to go with this image here. So I have this image. Let's actually try to crop it. So I'm just going to crop this portion here and just crop the selection part. Now that we have crop this part, I can actually go ahead and save the crop part right back here. So I'm just going to name it crop to PNG. It's saved. Now I can actually go ahead and check out the results. You can see this is the crop to image, which is actually cropped high quality with the same selection that I did. So this means that our image cropper is working. So this was the second test. Now for the final and the last for this stealth coding model, which is called Sonic and we got it for free. So this time I'm going to go ahead and actually create a tool to actually encrypt and decrypt images. So there goes the prompt, build a tool to encrypt and decrypt images for safe transfer. And we're going to be using Python again, and it's going to have a functional GUI. So let's go ahead and actually start coding with this one. So we already have the to-do list or the plan. We're going to set up the Python virtual environment and implement image encryption functionality using cryptography. So let's go ahead and actually approve this. Now, in this video, we have tackled pretty much everything. And I think this tool is really good when it comes to Python because the image cropper was really good. I have tried that same image cropper with Gemini 2.0 Flash and Gemini 2.5 Flash. But I think this was a really better result than that and quite fast, I would say. Now, it's going to create this new directory for this project. So let's run this command. Next step to set up the Python virtual environment. So let's go ahead and set that up. There you go. Let's save that. So we have the requirements.txt. So there you go. We ran into a couple of errors, but we have the image encryption tool right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the image, the cropped one. I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And um, for the password, it's just going to be really simple. One, two, three, four, five. And just encrypt the image. It's encrypted and saved as crop2.png.encrypted. So let's go ahead and see whether it's actually saved there or not. So there you go. You can see that the cropped image is encrypted and saved right here. Now let's actually go ahead and try to decrypt this image. So back here, I'm just going to go ahead and browse in the picture section and choose this crop.2.png encrypted file. And I'm going to enter the password, which was 12345. And let's actually go ahead and decrypt. I cannot see the decrypt button here, but let's try to hit enter and see whether it works or not. I don't think so. We have the decrypt button right here. As you can see, we cannot actually expand this one and we do not have the decrypt button here. So I will have to work on this. So let's go back to my VS code. So there you go. We went on, tweaked a little bit, and now we have the decrypt image and the encrypt image right here. And also the GUI window is now adjustable, as you can see right here which is really good. So let's actually go and select the same image again. I'm just going to go with this cropped image. Maybe this time I'm going to go with this test PNG. Open this up and same password, 12345 and encrypt. It's encrypted and now let's go ahead and actually decrypt it. So we have this test.png here. Open this up. Same password again. Let's try to decrypt. It says decrypted. And now it's saved as test.png.jpg. 
So let's actually go ahead and check out. As you can see right here, we have the test.png and this is the test.png.jpg. This is the file that we decrypted from the encryption. And the results are really mind blowing. All in all, I think this new Grok for coder or this stealth model, which is called Sonic, is the best when it comes to Python and when it comes to web development and UI UX. It is quite good, but not that great. And when it comes to Unity and 3D stuff and also gaming, I think it sucks because I have tried a few prompts in the 3D gaming part and it did not work. So with that, I want to wrap this video up. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand the strongholds of this model and how to actually utilize this model and how to access it for free. With that said, let's wrap this video up. I hope this video was valuable. If you found this video insightful, hit the like button, share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Ring the notification bell to never miss out on the daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.